whenever it comes to any react project everything is treated as a component therefore in order to pass data between components we primarily pass them as a props but this may not be the best practice in all cases say for example if you are building a large scale react project having tons of components and each nested below one another forming a complex component tree and in this case passing in data right from the root node to any node in the component tree is not going to be that easy also the components which are placed between the root node and the destination node may or may not use that value what they does is just simply grab that value and pass it down the tree just to make it accessible by the destination node so in order to overcome this scenario is what we have the use context hook in react in the previous videos we discussed about the use state use effect and the use memo hooks if you are new to this video i recommend you to watch the previous videos as well where we have explained in detail about other hooks concept available in react and in this video we are about to discuss use context hook how and when to use them in our react projects so hope you got a better understanding of what this video is all about with this idea and without any further ado let's get started here we have a simple flow diagram to understand the concept of use context in a more detailed manner we have a simple react project skeleton right over here we have a app component and below which we have the home component and inside this home component we have plenty of other components ranging from component a to component c so consider all the data within this component is stored in this home component and if suppose this component g is to access the value present in the home component or update itself based upon any changes happening in the value of home component what we traditionally do is to pass the data right from the home node to component a then move over to component d and pass it down to component g so that the component g is able to access the data present in the home component but as discussed earlier while working with large scale projects passing the data from one node to another just to make it accessible to the child node may not be the best practice so in this case we can go for using the use context hook where it is going to hold all the updated values and any component within the component tree can access the updated value on demand so this is the basic principle of use context hook now let's get started with the coding part here we have our starter react project up and ready and we basically have three components named the home component and inside this home component we have two other components named component a and component b so the root component is going to be the home component and below that home component we are going to have the component a and below the component a we have the component b and inside this home component we have a sample string data and right from the home component we are calling the component a by passing that value and inside the component a we are trying to get that value but we are not doing anything with that data we simply pass it to component b and right inside this component b we grab that data which is passed as a props and try to print them in the ui so if we refresh this page so from the home component we are calling the component a which renders the component a text in the ui and right inside the component b we have the component b and followed by which we have that text data which is passed as a props right from the home component in this example if we infer that while passing the data to the component a it is not doing any logic with the data which is been passed it just simply grabs that value and pass it down to component b so the component a has nothing to work with this data other than to pass it down to component b but while working with real scale applications while well, passing one or more data just to make it accessible to any other component below the component tree is just going to make your code more complex so now let's try to optimize this code with the help of use context hook now right inside this home component all we need to do is we need to create a context let me name it as home context and you can make use of the create context with the initial value as null so this is going to be the syntax for creating a context so practically we are working with context we need to create a context and also make use of the provider to make those values accessible to the child components so we have created a context with the help of create context and then let's create a home context provider 
And what we need to do is, we just simply need to wrap this component A inside this home context provider. And this home context provider requires a value. And the value is nothing but the data which we have right over here. Now by doing so, we don't need to pass this data as a props anymore. You can get rid of this. Also in the component B, you can remove this props. And in order to access this data value present in the home component, all we need to do is, we can simply restructure this data from the use context, which is the home context here. Now if you refresh this page, you will notice that we are going to get the same result, but this time we are basically using the use context fork to access the data. And inside this component A, we are neither getting the data or passing it down to the component tree. So it is purely independent of the data value. So this is a basic example of how to use use context API to make the data accessible to each and every component in the component tree. If the purpose of the use context is just to prevent the data from being passed from each and every component in the component tree, then why don't we create a separate service file to manage the data and make it easily accessible to all other components. So let's try to explain that scenario with the help of an example. And to do so, let's try to update this code by creating a separate service file. Let me create a sample use state with the state variable as first and the dispatch function as set first. And the initial value is given as one. Now inside the home component, Let's try to remove this context provider, which we have already created in the previous example. And also remove this data. And instead of that data, we are going to make use of the state variable, which we have inside this service folder. So right from the home component, in the component A, when we make use of the service file, and similarly, we can update the component B. We can remove this use context, and use the data from the service file. This time, if I refer this page, both component A and component B is able to access the state variable with the initial value which was given as 1. Now if we infer that, we are not passing the data as a props to each and every component to make it accessible, rather we simply try to extract the data from the service file. So the service file is going to be the common file for both component A and component B. So in this case, you might think that it is going to give us the same result, but it is not the case what you think of. Though component A and component B are going to point to the same service file, we are trying to extract them inside individual components. So each component internally maintain its own state. Though the service file is same, the states are not. Let me explain that by updating this code. Here right inside the component A, let's create a button And inside the onclick event of this button, I am going to increment the state value. And we use the same code inside the component B. So inside the component B also, we are going to have a separate button, which is going to increment the state value. Now with the updated code, Component A has a separate button which is going to update the state value and the component B is going to have a separate button which is going to update the same value present in the service file. Let's see how it works. If I click this button, you see that though component A and component B points to the same service file and is going to update the same state variable, clicking the button inside component A and component B is going to update those state variables with the unique values. Which means that component A and component B, though they are going to point to the same service file, they are maintaining a local state. And that is the reason any value change in component A is not going to affect component B. Similarly, whenever I click this component B button to increment the state value, it is not affecting component A. So this is the reason we may not go for using the service file as a solution. So as an expected result, what we need is, no matter whether I click the button in component A or component B, the value in the service file needs to be updated in sync, which means that the value inside component A and component B 
should be one and the same. Since it is going to point to the same global storage, which is basically the use context in this case. Now right inside the home component, let's create a home context just like what we have created earlier. After creating context, you can make use of the context provider. Home context the provider with a value, it's nothing but the service file. So right inside the home component, you can call the service file once and pass that as a value to the home context provider. After doing so, inside this component A, we don't need to directly access the service file. Instead, we can make use of the context. And the context is the home context. Similarly, in the component B, we can update this code like so. Now, if I refer this page, if I click this button present in component A, it is going to increment the value. Since we are using the use context hook here, this component B, which also listens to the same context, is getting updated as soon as I click this component A button. Similarly, if I click this button in component B, it is going to update the value in the component A. Because component A and B are going to listen to the same context, therefore any updation happening in either component A or component B is going to affect both of those values. Therefore, it is getting re-rendered with the updated value. So this time, we are able to get the expected result with the help of use context. So this is the basic example of when and why we need to use use context in our React projects. With this, though we are able to get with the solution of what we need, we just moved over with the use context just to make our code more concise and easy to understand. But if you look into the explorer section of your VS code, you see we have a plenty of components written down, but understanding and separating the context, service and view file separately just for this home component seems to be a little challenging. So let's try to refactor this project to make it even more concise while working with use context hooks. And for doing so, right inside the home component, let's create another folder called context. And inside this context, let's create home context.pxs file. So in this file, we are going to create a custom hook for create context. And right inside this home context provider, let's make use of the service file as the value. Now we have a separate file called the home context.txs where we have written a custom hook for creating the context. Similarly, let's create a separate file called the service wherein the home.service file goes into. Like the same way, we are going to create a separate folder called view wherein inside that the component a component b and the home.txs file moves into and right inside this home folder we will have the index.tss file that is going to be the entry point of this entire home page component so when we say this react function or a component export And we say this home component, let's get rid of this create context and this service file. We don't need this anymore. Let's update this as a home page. With these changes, right inside the source folder, we have the main.txs file, which is going to be the entry point of our React project, which renders the app component. And right inside this app component, we have nothing but a home component to be rendered. And if you click this, it is going to take us to the index.txs file. As mentioned earlier, it is going to be the entry point for this home page component. And this index.txs file, the home page is wrapped inside the context provider, which is nothing but a custom hook which were created for the create context. So the service file, what we have here is passed as a value to this home page context provider. With these changes, it looks even more concise and clear. So this is basically all about what use context and how to use them in our React projects. Hope you find this video useful. 
If you do so, consider subscribing and I will see you again in the next one.